nature is extremely beautiful, varied, and it evokes a sense of wonder in man. But in the process of a scientific investigation into the laws of nature, into the mysteries of nature, somehow or other the scientific method has been devised so that we cut out most of the lived experience like the color we see, the sound we hear, the warmth we feel, they are all replaced by, say, color is reduced to a frequency of light. Uh, similarly, the various sounds we hear are reduced to frequencies of vibration. The warmth we feel is replaced by what you see in a thermometer and so on and so forth. So this enchanted world that we directly experience is replaced by a very abstract world of science which is very disenchanted. Now the entire idea of doing science was to understand how this enchanted world was created or how, how does it work. But when we get involved in the process of science we are taught always to ignore our personal lived experiences, our sense of wonder, our love, our affection. These things don't get into what we actually do in science. And then when we want to say to others what we have discovered, it's usually said in such a technical drab fashion that most common people simply do not understand it. And that is a big problem for science because ultimately research funding comes from the taxpayer's money. So unless we are able to convince the taxpayer that what we are doing is extremely important and exciting, I'm afraid that uh, this kind of funding may disappear. There is therefore a need for developing communication skills. And that's not very easy, not everybody can do it. And the trouble is, people who are deeply involved in the research do not have the time, and others who are not deeply involved in the research and the new findings aren't really able to explain what is going on. The challenge really is how to describe this abstract, disenchanted world that science discovers to common people in a language they understand, in a language in which the enchantment is all there. There are some scientists who are able to do this. In the old days, I'm reminded of Sir Jagdish Chandra Bose, who was India's first modern scientist. He used to write extremely well, and he could communicate with ordinary people. When we were kids in school, among the various things we had to read, there was one piece by Jagdish Chandra Bose. It was called Bhagirathir Utsa Sandhane. That's in search of the origins of the river Bhagirathi. That created a deep impression in our minds because he tells the story of where the river comes from and how is it that water keeps flowing all the time so he describes the geographical processes in a beautiful fashion by saying that the river Ganges used to flow quite nearby our house. And as a kid, I used to sit near the river and watch all the changes that were going on, the uh, tides and at times during the monsoon, how the river used to flood the plains and you could see the water extended up to the horizon and then again around winter time the water flow the, is to reduce and shrink. So that filled him with a sense of wonder. At night when all the other sounds disappeared he could hear the murmur of the river. He the, in Bengali, 
the word for the sound created by small waves hitting the shore is kul kul. So he could hear the kul kul sound of the water very clearly. And to him, it appeared like music. The question that arose in his mind is, how is it that this water keeps flowing all the time and there's no end to it? So where is it coming from? And he then writes that I asked the river, where are you coming from? And the river said to him, from the matted hair of Mahadeva. That's a very well-known phrase in Bengali. It said, Tumi kota ashitecho. Where are you coming from? Nodi kohilo, the river said. Mahadeva jota hoite. It's, it's beautiful. And then uh, he says that soon there was an occasion when a, someone very close to him in the family passed away and the mortal remains were uh, burnt on the banks of the river. And this question arose that where has this flow of affection, which was deep and widespread, where has it gone suddenly? Will it ever come back? Is death the real end of everything? And so on. And then eventually he describes how he traces the origin of the river back to the Himalayas and then explains how the river starts from the snow, uh, the ice that melts and there are many, many branches which then go and meet together and create this huge river and what the various changes that the river uh, makes to the earth and finally the river goes to the ocean but that is not the end of the story, he says. The water is then is evaporated by the sun and it goes back again to the mountain, to the uh, head or the matted hair of Mahadev and the whole process starts. And then he says that uh, when I grew up and uh, I learned all this and, and experienced the wonders myself, I came back to the river and uh, then I heard this sound which was so familiar to me uh, this cool cool sound and uh, I could now understand what the river meant when he said uh, I come from the matted hair of Mahadev. Now this kind of language, this kind of imagery it's very familiar to people. Of course we are born in a culture uh, and therefore it's very important to use the images which are familiar in that culture so that the communication becomes gripping and effective. Scientists, however, have the tendency to always say everything very accurately, exactly, and so on. And in the process, what they are saying becomes very dull to ordinary people. So one has to balance the two and I think Jesse Bose did it in a very, very wonderful way. And we should go back and look at these writings and see how we can do our best in modern times. Mm -hmm.